Now, here's the important part. In 2003, when the first gold ETF was formed, the price of gold per ounce was $332. <laughs> What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Traveling Crypto. I wanted to talk about ETFs and what that could potentially mean for the Bitcoin market. And we'll take a look at some historical data in recent history of how ETFs transformed the gold market and what effect did that have on the supply and demand and eventually the price of gold. And then after that, we'll get into our Bitcoin analysis and discuss some altcoins that saw really nice rallies over the last few days, some of which we did send out trade alerts for. If you want access to the trade alerts, link is in the description. But let us get right into the ETFs first. So what are ETFs? ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. And it is simply an investment fund that is traded on an exchange like a stock. So it, you can buy and sell it. It has a fluctuating price. It's speculative. But what is underlying the fund could be a stock, an asset, a commodity such as gold. And in this case, Bitcoin. And Bitcoin will have two types of ETFs initially, right? There's going to be the physical backed ETF and there's a futures backed ETF. Now, out of the nine that are prospected to be decided upon next year, only one of them is a physical backed ETF, and that is the Venex Solid X Bitcoin ETF, which also happens to be the one that has the most rumors and hype surrounding its acceptance. And a physical backed ETF, that just means that the investment fund will buy actual Bitcoins and then break those off into shares that can be traded on the ETF exchange versus a futures backed ETF, which will just the underlying asset will just be a, fu a Bitcoin futures contract. So it could vary from the actual price of Bitcoin. And now this is very important because when we talk about gold ETFs, we're going to be talking about physically backed ETFs, physically backed gold ETFs and what that meant for the gold market. The first gold ETF popped up in 2003 in Australia. And soon thereafter, we saw the spider gold shares appear in the United States in 2004. And that is currently the largest gold ETF. Now, here's the important part. In 2003, when the first gold ETF was formed, the price of gold per ounce was $332. And it jumped all the way up to $1,600, actually jumped to $1,900 in 2011 and then dropped back down to 1600 this article was written in 2013 the price of gold was 332 dollars when the first etf appeared now why is that well there are a few factors that contributed to it one for sure was the etf itself right it, there's been a few studies and analysis done on this and basically the gold physically backed etfs allowed investors to buy gold without actually having to purchase the metal right because the in the investment fund that they were buying the the etf from was actually buying the gold and the etf itself was backed by that physical gold so it allowed them to buy gold without actually having to store it somewhere or going to pick it up etc and then five years after the first gold ETF popped up on the market, the financial crisis of 2008 came. And there's an article in Forbes, you'll see here, before the financial crisis, investment demand for gold was around 8% of total demand for gold. As the financial crisis came in, this rose to something like 22 to 23% of total demand for gold. A lot of this investment demand was helped quite substantially by those new products that physically backed ETFs just because of their ease of use, right? Because it allowed investors to enter into the gold market relatively easy. It was just as easy as buying a stock, right? It's, again, it's traded on the New York Stock Exchange, the Spotter Gold Shares, and you can literally just buy it like you buy a stock using TD Ameritrade or something. And then you throw the financial crisis into the mix and you'll see why the demand for gold increased dramatically because you made it easier for people to attain. And then gold, you know, by default is already an asset that people trust when the economy is in a downturn. So it allowed them to buy gold even easier. Now, that I think will have the same effect with Bitcoin. And I'm not saying that people will flock to Bitcoin once the market crashes and the market will crash in a few years or within a few years, I should say. But it, it's not that, but it's the fact that Bitcoin is is still, if you ask, you know, go ask your parents or go ask your, your grandparents, Bitcoin is still seen as something that is uh, confusing to, to, to buy, right? 
even though you can, you know, create a Coinbase account for, for your parents and, you know, they can buy Bitcoin in the same way that, that they would buy stocks or something, but it's still seen as this digital money that is confusing to buy and then transfer. And then how do you transfer back to fiat, et cetera. So, you know, having a, a Bitcoin ETF, especially a physically backed Bitcoin ETF will allow traders and those that are only interested in purchasing on the traditional markets will allow them access to buy Bitcoin and actual Bitcoin at that. So if the physically backed Bitcoin ETF is approved, we might see a, an increased demand for Bitcoin. And especially if then, you know, there is a financial crisis or an economic downturn and Bitcoin is seen as a store of value in the same way that gold or the, or, you know, real estate is, then that might drive the demand even higher. So, you know, there isn't really empirical data on what's going to happen uh, with a Bitcoin ETF, but it will allow a larger pool of investors who would have probably never purchased Bitcoin on, you know, an actual cryptocurrency exchange. It will allow them to enter into the Bitcoin market with ease. All right, let us get right into our analysis for the day. Uh, I'll go over XCM in a little bit. Let me just pull up the Bitcoin chart. All right. So looking at Bitcoin, uh, you know, nothing really remarkable. Again, we're trading in the sideways pattern. We can probably remove uh, the descending triangle, the la the larger descending triangle that lasted 10 months, which we broke out of trading sideways. And I say that because it's no longer needed, but I like to keep it on here to remind myself that, yes, you can trade, as we said, you can come out of a pattern, even a strong pattern, uh, just trading sideways. You don't have to, you know, go up or down right out of a pattern. Now, I do think we will see a directional change in or a direction, but we will see a decision on which way Bitcoin wants to go. Eventually, we can't keep trading at this extremely low period of volatility. This is the lowest volatility that we've seen in, in almost two years. And it rivals, you know, the low volatility periods that we've seen ever. So obviously, in low volatility, Bitcoin or not Bitcoin, but any asset can't continue to trade uh, as stably as that. Obviously, there are jokes that, that are saying Bitcoin is, is the new stable coin. But even if you look at something like the MACD, you'll see how flat it is at zero, really, uh, just flat for the entire time. There is no momentum. And obviously, the MACD is based on a set of moving averages. Uh, so the thing is not moving, <laughs> right? That's why the MACD is flat. Now, what I went ahead and did was placed a leveraged long position on BitMEX for 5x. And the liquidation at that position is $5,300, right? So if Bitcoin gets to 5300 my position gets liquidated. Obviously, I have stop limits in place way before that to, to protect my portfolio. But I want to take advantage of what I think will be a rally come December. Now, I'm not saying we're going to see 20K, far from it. But I do think we will see a rally come December, come December. Because again, I mean, we have to break out in a direction one way or another. At some point, not saying we have to do it in December, but it will happen at some point. And if the backed platform is being released December 12th and we're in this we're in this lull period where, you know, it's it's actually quite boring. Any positive news, especially one that we've been talking about for a year or two, might spark a short rally. And then when I look at the shorts, you'll see that the BTC shorts are decreasing exponentially. So people are closing, traders are closing out their positions in anticipation of something. This is a, oops, this is a teller of market sentiment right here, right? So opening a long leverage position on BitMEX uh, for the current price of Bitcoin is not a, it's, it's a pretty low risk trade. In, in my opinion, especially since we've been on this trend for now almost three months. And if you want access to the trade alerts, yes, even BitMEX positions are sent out in the trade alerts. There's a section for futures alerts that you'll see here. And that is where we send out the leveraged positions that, that we are partaking in. So back to the charts. Let us look at XEM. XEM saw a 26% gain literally overnight. You'll see this long uh, candle here on the on the one hour chart. Now, I'm not saying we knew this was going to happen, but XEM was trading in a period of low volatility going all the way back to August. You'll see this on a few alts, uh, even ONT right now. You'll see ONT is just in this flat range going all the way back to August as well with very little volume, no real volatility, no movement whatsoever. Um, but XEM, you know, a top 20 crypto that once the community had high hopes for, um, you know, it was trading in this in this lull period 
and you can include some of these in your portfolio. In my view, they are low risk long term holds because you never know when we're going to see a breakout. And specifically with XEM, this was due to CoinCheck resuming trading activities. If you remember, there was, I think it was like $500 million worth of XEM that was hacked back uh, in January. And CoinCheck announced that they resumed trading activities and that you can trade XEM on CoinCheck. So that's, you know, spurred this. Uh, rally that we saw here last night. Either way, once I got an alert on TradingView, because I, I set up alerts for all my trades, once I got an alert on TradingView that uh, this thing was, you know, crossing the, I actually had it had just set a 10% goal, but that it was crossing the 10% goal. Uh, we did set a trailing stop limit uh, to protect profits once we got up to the 25% range. So once the market pulled back, the stop limit was enforced and we booked profits. Another coin that we sent a trade alert for, QKC, you'll see here on the Discord, just so you know that I'm not lying, this was sent last week. Uh, we closed above the 200 EMA and we saw that it was bouncing off of the 0.236. Uh, repeatedly. And so we entered a position at the close above the 200 EMA and wrote it all the way up 10% uh, to the 0.5 FIB level, which was our, our target at 857 sats and took profit there. And now there is a little bit of a retracement. There will be a re-entry into QKC, I believe, uh, just based on this healthy volume that we saw in the last few days. Again, stay tuned to the trade alerts to find out when I will re-enter position on QKC. And in terms of news, it's actually rather slow day in crypto news not much going on so we will skip this for today uh, and just yeah leave it at the etf talk as well as the analysis on a few coins as well as bitcoin hopefully you guys learned something today uh yeah i have high hopes for for the physically backed bitcoin etf specifically the futures backed one i i do think that if those are approved if you know a combination of the futures backed ETFs are approved. We will probably see a small rally, but the, the real news will come with a Bitcoin physically backed ETF that will allow a larger pool of traders to get into Bitcoin without having to jump onto a cryptocurrency exchange. And they'll be able to do that right on, you know, the, the New York Stock Exchange or, or something similar. So that is it for this video. Go ahead and leave a comment if you have a question or a comment or hit me up on the Discord. Leave a thumbs up if you learn anything from this video. Sign up to the trade alerts. If you want, link is in the description. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Stay safe out there. Peace.